We all know the story, the fire, the liftoff, the breathless journey across 380,000 kilometers or 240,000 miles of black vacuum. We remember the grainy black and white footage, the hushed voices, the impossible bravery. But that's the public face of Apollo, the heroic narrative. The real story, the one that changed the world, happened far from the public eye. It was in the endless calculations, the late night engineering sessions, the relentless pursuit of perfection in a world where a single flaw meant absolute catastrophe. This isn't just about the finish line. This is the story of the race itself and the trail of innovation it left behind. Think about it. A team of 400,000 people, a workforce larger than the entire population of many modern cities. They were tasked with building the most complex machine ever conceived by man under the pressure of a global ideological struggle. The challenge wasn't just technical, it was organizational. It was about making all those disparate parts move as one, a single, synchronized symphony of human effort. NASA's answer was an unprecedented application of systems engineering and project management. They created a matrix organization where individuals reported to both a functional manager, their engineering specialty, and a project manager, their specific component like the command module or the lunar lander. This was a new, often frustrating, but ultimately brilliant way to break down bureaucratic silos. The legendary George Mueller, head of NASA's Office of Manned Spaceflight, insisted on a practice called all-up testing, where every stage of the Saturn V rocket was launched together on the very first flight rather than being tested individually. This was a radical departure from traditional engineering, which called for a slow, step-by-step -step approach. It saved years, but it was a gamble of epic proportions, an act of supreme confidence in the process and the people. Every single component, from a tiny transistor to the massive rocket stages, had a unique serial number and a complete history log. This meticulous, almost fanatical level of documentation was a precursor to modern quality control and supply chain management. It built a culture where accountability was paramount, where a bug in a single bolt in Indiana could be traced back to its origin and fixed before it ever reached the launch pad in Florida. This wasn't just management, it was a new philosophy of building. The moon landings are often romanticized as a triumph of analog engineering, but the hidden truth is that they were the cradle of the digital age. At the heart of the command module and the lunar module was the Apollo Guidance Computer, AGC. It was a technological marvel that weighed just 32 kilograms or 70 pounds, small enough to fit in a briefcase. In an era when computers filled entire rooms, this was a breathtaking feat of miniaturization. The AGC was revolutionary for one simple reason. It used integrated circuits, ICs. It was the first computer ever built with them. Most computers of the time relied on individual transistors and other discrete components. The AGC used thousands of tiny chips, each containing multiple transistors.
This was a direct result of NASA's requirements for extreme reliability and low weight. The engineers at MIT's Draper Laboratory, led by Charles Stark Draper, faced an impossible task. They needed a computer that was powerful enough to calculate orbital trajectories in real time, but small and light enough to be carried into space. The integrated circuit was the only answer. But the AGC's most fascinating feature was its memory. The software was stored in rope memory, a form of hardwired, non-volatile ROM. Teams of women, often called Little Old Ladies or LOLs, manually threaded copper wires through tiny magnetic cores. If a wire passed through the core, it represented a digital one. If it went around it, it was a zero. The code, painstakingly hand-woven, was literally etched in copper. This made the memory incredibly resilient to radiation and power fluctuations, but it also meant that a single bug in the code required a months-long, painstaking, manual reweaving of the entire system. This human element, this fusion of ancient craft and futuristic technology, is a beautiful and stark reminder of the immense human effort that went into every single detail. This forced leap in IC technology, fueled by the AGC's demands, created the commercial market for computer chips. Without the AGC, companies like Intel might have been a much longer time in coming. The Apollo program created an almost endless catalog of everyday items, each a solution to a seemingly impossible problem. Consider the spacesuit. It was more than a glorified jumpsuit. It was a miniature spacecraft, a flexible, multi-layered life support system. To protect astronauts from micrometeoroids and the extreme temperatures of space, engineers developed multi-layered insulation, or MLI, made of alternating layers of reflective mylar and spacer materials. This technology is now used in a staggering variety of applications, from fire-resistant suits for firefighters to modern building insulation and even the emergency thermal blankets found in first aid kits. The Apollo program's need for efficiency and precision on the lunar surface led to the invention of the modern cordless power tool. NASA contracted with Black & Decker to create a lightweight, self-contained drill to collect lunar core samples. This mission-critical tool had to be battery-powered, operate in a vacuum, and be manageable with bulky gloves. The result was a high-efficiency motor and a high-capacity battery pack, the direct progenitor of the cordless drills, vacuums, and power tools we use in our homes today. In medicine, the impact was truly transformative. The constant monitoring of astronauts' health required miniaturized sensors and real-time data transmission systems. NASA developed lightweight sensors to measure EKG, blood pressure, and respiratory rates. This telemetry technology, initially used to track astronauts on the moon, was adapted for terrestrial use, leading directly to the modern patient monitoring systems now standard in every hospital's intensive care unit. The very first wearable medical monitors were a direct result of the Apollo program. Even the freeze-dried food developed for space missions, lightweight, nutritious, and easy to store, laid the groundwork for the modern food industry's convenience meals and even baby food. Beyond the gadgets and the systems, Apollo's most profound legacy might be the one you can't touch. The cultural and scientific impact was immeasurable. The lunar samples, the 382 kilograms, 
or 842 pounds, of rocks and soil brought back from the moon. They are the single most valuable collection of scientific material in human history. They allowed scientists to precisely date the formation of the moon, to understand the early bombardment of the inner solar system, and to test hypotheses about planetary formation. The discovery of high concentrations of certain elements in the lunar regolith, for example, helped confirm the theory that the moon was formed from debris ejected after a Mars-sized object collided with the early Earth. This single collection of rocks changed planetary science forever. Then there's the visual, the photographs, Earthrise, taken by Apollo 8 astronaut Bill Anders on Christmas Eve, 1968. This single image of our fragile blue planet rising above the lifeless lunar horizon became a cultural touchstone. It was a cosmic moment of clarity. It transcended politics, religion, and national identity. For the first time, humanity saw itself not as a collection of warring tribes, but as a single organism, a shared home, this photograph is widely credited with helping to galvanize the modern environmental movement and fostering a new global consciousness. It was a shared sense of wonder and a humbling realization of our place in the universe. The Apollo program began as a fierce rivalry with the Soviet Union, a high-stakes proxy war of engineering and ideology. But in its final moments, it laid the groundwork for a new kind of relationship. The Apollo-Soyuz test project in 1975, just three years after the last moon landing, was a symbolic climax to the space race. American and Soviet spacecraft docked in orbit, and astronauts and cosmonauts exchanged handshakes and flags. It was a profound gesture of de-escalation, a silent acknowledgement that humanity's ambitions could and should transcend national boundaries. This historic event was the first small step toward the long-term international cooperation that now defines space exploration, culminating in the International Space Station, a permanent monument to what we can achieve when we work together. The Apollo program was an unsustainable, breathtakingly expensive sprint it was a product of its time, of Cold War anxieties, and a national will to prove its technological supremacy. It was never meant to last, but in its wake, it left a legacy of innovation that touches every aspect of our lives, from the computer on your desk to the doctor's tools that saved your life. Apollo was more than a mission to a destination. It was a journey into our own potential, a blueprint for what we can achieve when we are united by a singular, audacious goal. And that, more than anything, is its lasting legacy.